Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can create timestamps for your YouTube videos when you're working on editing your video inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So when I'm talking about timestamps, I'm talking about clickable links to different sections of your video. You could call it a chapter, if you will, where you have different sections that talk about different things. So for long videos like the tutorials I create that tend to end up pretty helpful for people, I find. So if you look at a video that has timestamps, then on the play bar, you'll see these different sections. You can click on, hover over, and you can see the name that the creator wrote for the timestamp for that video at that particular time. So in terms of how you actually add them to your YouTube video, it's going to look roughly like this. So this timestamps header at the top here is totally optional. But what's important is that you add a time in your video where the section starts. So this is measured in minutes and seconds. You can also add on another semicolon in front of this if you need to go into hours, though that probably wouldn't apply for most videos. And you just need to keep adding timestamps for each of the different sections. So you only add the starting point and then you add the starting point for the second one, third one and so on. So obviously there's nothing you specifically have to do and resolve in order to create timestamps. But there are some tools you can use that make generating this list really handy and you can do it while you're editing so that you'll have your list ready to go as soon as you upload your video. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So the way I like to do it in Resolve is to use these little marker tools in order to mark the different sections that are going to end up becoming the timestamps for the video. So what I'd be doing when I go ahead and edit my video is that I'll hit play and just listen back to the content that I'm editing as I'm making cuts down here. And when I come to a verbal cue for the next section, I would stop and then add a marker. So you can either add a marker directly onto the video clip or you can add it to the timeline itself. Generally, I add it to the timeline uh, because I don't want the marker to move with the video clip, but I want it to be a marker point for the final timeline not related to the clip directly. So I'll go ahead and click this marker tool or hit M. Now by default, this is blue. If you prefer any other color, you can click on the drop down and choose a different one, but that's the default. So it just ends up being the easiest to use. And now with these markers, which represent a timestamp position, I'm gonna double click it and give it a name up here. So in this case, I might just say two people walking scene. And then this serves as a name I can use when I'm creating the final list for the timestamps. Actually going to go ahead and make that capitalized. I'm a little OCD there. So and now we have one timestamp. So you can see hovering over this timestamp, it's measured in hours and it starts from one, not zero. So just keep that in mind that two is actually one hour in terms of your video playback. And then there's minutes, seconds and frames. So we won't include the frames when we're creating the timestamp list on YouTube. What I will sometimes do is round up to the nearest frame. So if I see 20 frames up here after the seconds, then when I actually create the final list, I'll just round it up to nine seconds. And that would be what I use for YouTube. Either that or on occasion, I'll just kind of round down unless it's really close to the next second. I just want to have it positioned so that when uh, people go to that timestamp, they don't miss anything I'm saying. So we have our first timestamp. So I'd go back to continue editing my video. So I'll go ahead and hit play. Let's make some imaginary blade cuts and say that, oh, okay, maybe I needed to delete this section in here. So I'll just go ahead and select this delete key. Okay, got rid of that. And now let's say that where we're at right now is another section for our timestamp list. So generally, I'm going to snap right here to the beginning of this clip. I'm going to click on the marker tool to add our next marker for a timestamp. Double click on it, give it a new name, and I'll just say new cut here. So let's just go ahead and add a few more. Keep in mind, this is very much up to you where you think a good breakpoint is in your video so that you can define the sections for yourself. But let's just add a few extra cuts there, another marker and another marker over here as well. Okay, so what do we actually do with these markers? If we hover over each of them, we could definitely generate a list here to uh, use with our YouTube description for the timestamps. But there's actually a tool called Edit Index, which we can find at the top left, which can kind of simplify the need for creating the list in a sense. So if I click on Edit Index up here, and I'll hide the media pool, then we're gonna see a bunch of edits that have been made 
for our video. And a lot of these aren't actually going to be markers by default. So what you need to do to show only markers is to click on this menu up here, go down to show markers and then all. As soon as we do that, the only things that are going to be listed in this edit index are these markers that we've created. Now, if you're doing it like I typically do, then all of these markers are just going to represent the timestamps in your video. They're going to be sequentially listed here from the earliest on in the video to the end of your video. So we have a very simple list here that we can just basically grab the timestamp value, minutes, seconds, and then the note, which is the name of that timestamp. Now, when you get to this point, there's a good chance you're not seeing the same thing I'm seeing because there's actually a lot of columns that exist for the edit index. So if you want to see more or less just the record in and the notes, maybe the color, then you can right click on this menu here and uncheck some of the unnecessary columns. And there's a lot here. So as you can see, when you start building up a really long edit index, there's a lot of information you can grab here and most of it's not really necessary. So if you have all of these, then the notes might get pushed way over here to the right. You can drag the column over here if you want and just position them next to each other. So let's see if we have source in and notes right next to each other, that can also work. Generally, I'm not using most of those other options. So I'll just kind of go in here and get rid of them because I don't actually need them as things are right now. So just having a simpler column list is going to work better for me. So at this point, what do we do to get this onto our YouTube description? We can click here and there's not exactly a export index list here. So what I'll do is actually just manually type it at this point. So for the columns, let's make sure that uh, source in is listed here. That's the important one, source in and notes in this case. So at this point, we just need to open up any text editor. I like Notepad++ for taking simple notes like this. And we just have to write our list of timestamps. So I'll always add timestamps as a header at the top of my timestamps description, just so it's clear what it is. And then we just go down the list on the left. So we take this and we type it in here. So zero minutes and then a zero eight seconds for that first timestamp. And then two people walking scene. Enter next line. And then we do zero minutes, 13 seconds. New cut. Next line. 0 22 but this one i might actually round up to 23 seconds since we're looking at a 30 frames per second video so the frame where this actually starts is really close to 23 seconds more so than it is to 22 seconds so it actually makes sense to round up there and then we have marker 3 enter for the next line and then uh, 0 minutes 36 seconds marker 4 and then we would just do this for the duration of our video however many timestamps we have we just put in a list here sequentially. Then when you upload your video and you're building out your YouTube description, you can just throw this at the bottom or wherever you want in the description. YouTube will pick up on that. And then when people are viewing your video, they're going to see this where your video is broken up into different sections. And it's just much easier to navigate, especially if you have a longer video. You can see this one is 19 minutes there. So I would hope that the timestamps helped with that one specifically. So that's pretty much my process for making timestamps for videos using Resolve 17.1's edit index as a extra tool for making this process a little quicker. So I've been Chris. I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at this trick I like to use. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see all of you in my future video content.